for those of you who don't know, Sam Altman, uh, he's co-founder of OpenAI uh, and Ser- serial, entrepreneur. serial entrepreneur, Y Combinator. Uh, if you're in business, you know who he is. But he's taking a big bet that uh, if successful, has the potential to reshape industries, nations uh, across the globe. And that bet is to raise $7 trillion. With a, with a T, which is 7% of the global <laughs> GDP. <laughs> Seven with a T uh, to reshape the global AI landscape. Uh, in particular, with a focus on the chip side of things, how so how the AI is actually powered. Yep. Uh, but the breakdown of that, I thought was fast was interesting. So Nasdaq put out an article, and they said that is a lot of money. First sentence. Yeah, thank you. We need that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for stating the obvious, but we need to state it because it's not commonplace what he's doing. He says that's bigger than the annual economic output of every country in the world besides the U.S. It is bigger than Great Britain and Germany's economies combined. It is bigger than Microsoft and Apple combined. And it is about 14x the size of the entire global semiconductor industry. Oh. That's pretty significant. Now, yeah. relying on Asian nations, Saudi uh, and the U.S. and other business partnerships, that's easy to keep people involved in this. What are your initial thoughts on, on a move like this? Uh, I think a, more of a question. Do you think the internet would be as successful as it was without the evolution of the personal computer. Yeah. So I think he, I think he's thinking the same thing, which is in order for adoption to happen at scale, we have to solve the crucial problem, which is the processing for AI technology is uh, behind. And it's currently 80% of that market is controlled by NVIDIA. <clears throat> so he's, he's trying to force the change. It's the same thing with, Cell phones, right? Cell phones wouldn't nearly be as successful as they were if they hadn't solved for, <clears throat> excuse me, if they hadn't solved for the tower problem, right? There was only like, I think when they first started, if you watch the BlackBerry documentary, it was like they could only get 500 phones to uh, to one cell phone tower until they like reverse engineered it and they were able to get like 10,000 phones. And so a, a pretty big breakthrough is needed in order to see the adoption I think that they want and usher in the next era of the web effectively, which is AI driven. Yeah, and and, and, and it's interesting because just to be clear, he's talking about, not you, but Sam Altman. I talked to him personally. Uh, <clears throat> what we're talking about is next level AI. We're not just talking about material compilation and manufacturing chips. We're talking about, there's an, there's an outcome attached to this work. This is next level superpower AI kind of stuff to be clear to your point about a revolution. What's the, uh, do you know the adoption of AI at the moment? I don't. Be, say it again. Yeah. There's this thing that they use in technology for the adoption curve, the S curve. And it basically says for how, however long it took to reach 10% adoption in the same time period, we'll, we'll achieve 90% adoption. Wow. So like an example of that would be wow. electric cars. It's been like 30, 35 years, and we still don't have 10% adoption of electric vehicles. So let's just say it takes 40 years to get another 90% adoption. It's going to be about 40 years, which is quick because it, right. it took 40 years to, to get 10%, 10% adoption. Right. Bitcoin's another example of that, right? Where we're now into the era where the, we're now into the era where the adoption curve is... Um, we're, we're past 10%, yeah. right? So we're, we're exponentially. <laughs> My bad. We're exponentially. In this guy's trying to tell me he's not getting sick. I'm Exp- not. It's, it's something in here. <clears throat> we're exponentially increasing our adoption of, of Bitcoin, right? So AI, I think, at least in my personal experience, is being adopted like nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah. It's integrated into everything. That said, the one thing that would slow it down would be computing processing can't actually keep up with it. So, I mean, just to that point, it, it, the only thing, you know, there's a lot of what goes on in the AI space that many of us don't understand. But if this is successful, I think I tend to think of like all the fantasies, all the books, all the stories. It's that much closer to actually being happened in terms of the type of technological advancement we can see interacting with us. I yeah. think it's extremely fascinating. I, I saw. So if you've ever gone back and kind of looked at the original founding uh, documents for Google, 
their mission has always been to have the ability for a person to search without having to type in a keyword. Mm. How do you do that? I was sitting there the other day and watching the commercial and they pulled up a picture via like a, a Google Android phone and they just circled the, the element in a picture that this guy was trying to track down and it actually ran a AI driven like Google search looking for that product. Wow. And so that's just the direction that we're going a world where we don't have to actually, it's more intuitive. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. It understands natural communication and thought process. You don't have to hack the, the keyword to get what you actually want. I love it. That's cool and creepy and fascinating at the same time. It's also important though, if, if you're an entrepreneur, like it, it's just that relevant. Like right. if, if you're not adopting AI today and you don't think you're one of those people who thought that, oh, the internet is just a fad. I hate to break it to you. There's a lot of money being thrown in that direction right now. Yeah, and and legitimately, your days are numbered. So, correct. 